Is the US government covering up the extent of new hacking activity? Welcome to The Red Couch, the web show about internet freedom and security. Last month, US court systems websites were crippled by a cyber attack. Vital information on sensitive cases was unavailable to the public. A spokesman for the courts said this was a classic denial of service attack, where hackers release a landslide of requests to a server hosting a website, causing the site to shut down. But the FBI said this was not an act of terrorism. Instead, the court websites were suffering technical problems. Nevertheless, a group called the European Cyber Army claimed responsibility. The Red Couch got in touch with the European Cyber Army and they told us why they carried out the attack and who's next on their hit list. Because a lot of hackers are from Eastern Europe, I am deciding to adopt an East European accent when giving the answers of the European Cyber Army. They told us, we attacked the US courts because of its failure to execute impartial justice. What are the examples of impartial justice? We have thousands of examples like that, such as Jeremy Hammond, Barrett Brown, and their failure to sentence Sabu. Hammond and Brown are hackers in prison, while Sabu is a hacker turned FBI informant, the ultimate scum in geek world. We asked them, what do you think about the FBI's response that this is due to technical problems? And they replied, As the Federal Bureau of Investigation has labeled the attacks, technical glitches. You can expect to see a hell of a lot of technical glitches. We hope to send a message to the justice system. How can you verify that you were responsible for the cyber attacks without revealing your identity? And they replied, we don't need to verify anything. The feds and the reporters must verify it. But the US courts, UK courts and PISA can't expect more downtime coming up. Now, I can't be sure the European Cyber Army is the real deal. But it takes a lot of nerve to take responsibility for a federal crime for a laugh. We tried to get in touch with the FBI to get their response, but unlike hackers admitting to cyber terrorism, they didn't get back to us. They may not be reaching the headlines, but hacks have been increasing for the last 18 months worldwide. Two weeks ago, US online security company Cloudflare said it fought back against a massive hack against one of its customers using the clocks on their computers. This was an attack on Network Time Protocol, NTP. How does this work? Listen to our lecturer. Okay, what you have here are some good computers. How do we know they're good? They are smiling and they have a little halo. And here you have a good server. These computers can be part of a network, say in a company, and their time has to be synchronized. In order to do that, they have to ask a server what the time is, and the server tells them, so they all have the same time. Now here, you have a bad computer. How do we know it's bad? It has a little Hitler moustache and it's gritting its teeth. And the bad computer has lots of friends called bots. And these live in thousands and thousands of computers sleeping and waiting to be activated. When the bad computer wants to hack into the server, it wakes up all of these bots and tells them to pretend to be these good computers asking the time of the server. And the server sends back the information to the good computers. But when this happens thousands and thousands of times, it crashes these computers and any websites they may be hosting. CEO of Cloudflare, Matthew Prince, told us these attacks do not require much technical sophistication, but can cause enormous damage. He said there was nothing about the target that made him believe that a government or a more sophisticated entity 
was involved. Yes, individuals are arming themselves with massive cannons using simple tech, which causes mayhem. Hacking Insider told us that anyone can declare an internet protest using these kind of weapons. Individuals now can have more power than corporations and governments. Yes, the democratization of hacking has begun. Anyone can be a hacker now. You, your mum, or your dad. How do we fight back? The day we fight back was an attempt by big internet companies such as Facebook and hacking groups such as Anonymous to combine their efforts to lobby the US government to stop its sweep of your personal data. But it was not such a success. In our last issue of The Red Couch, we asked you to send us your suggestions as to how we can better fight back against the surveillance state. Thank you for your replies. And we now want to hear more from you. So please keep sending us those emails at howfightback at yahoo.com. The Red Couch is brought to you by CyberGhost 5, a virtual private network that gives you anonymity online and allows you to surf the web securely. Mm -hmm.